Hey everyone, today I've got a quick PC building tutorial for you. I'm gonna be showing you how to install this PC cooler CPS DS360 AIO liquid CPU cooler in this build I'm putting together. This has an Intel i7-13700K. The motherboard is a MSI Z690 carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. And this case, if you're wondering, is an MSI MPG Velox 100R mid-tower PC case. Of course, if you're interested in this cooler, it is linked below in the description. But let's go ahead and dive right into installing this PC cooler AIO. So our first step is to assemble the radiator. I'm just gonna pop it roughly into its spot here in the case so I can figure out which way the fan cables are gonna sit. So the radiator, I'm gonna mount it roughly like that with the block head there and the three fans are gonna go in these spots. So I want the fan cables to be on the back side. So you can keep that in mind. I'll pull this out here. So now I've got the radiator in the same orientation that it'll be in the case and we can grab our fan. So if you have a look at the fan on the side here, there's some arrows, you can see the arrow right there. That means the airflow is flowing in on this side and out the back. So we want to make sure that the fan goes in this direction with that part facing down. And then look for your cables. We want those to be at the back when we install these. So I'm going to have one fan right there, just like that. Again, with the cable at the back, another one right there and another one right there. And in the box, there was a screw packet like this. We're looking for the long screws in here. These will mount the fans to the radiator. So there's 12 of the screws in the box and you can see there's four holes, one on each corner of the fan and on the radiator there's pre-threaded holes. So you can line these up and make sure you're not pinching any of the cables. It's probably easiest to try and line them up just with your fingers at first. So we'll get all those in. And the second fan, again, make sure the cables are on the back. And then again, the same thing with the third. And once those are all threaded, grab a Phillips screwdriver and we can tighten these down. Not too tight, just nice and snug. I like to go in a cross pattern. And the final one, just like that. And we'll get the fan cables all pigtailed together. So we've got the four pin PWM connector there. So you can take that, take the female, make sure you're putting it in in the correct direction and put that into the socket there. And then take the same one on this one and we'll put it in the socket here. Just again, make sure you're putting it in the correct way. And then in the box, it did come with an extension cable here. So we're gonna plug that into the last one. And then this is where we're gonna make the connection to the motherboard. Next up, we're gonna mount the radiator in the case. Now I do wanna mention if it's really tight, you might wanna plug in your cables ahead of time. I have a fair bit of space in this case, so I'm gonna do it afterwards, but double check that before you tighten down the radiator. So that's gonna go roughly right there. I'm just gonna flip up the case. On the radiator, you can see there's these threaded screw holes here, and we need to line those up with these notches here. So I'm just gonna lift it roughly into place. And then there was 12 of these screws and these just go in here to those threaded screw holes. I'll just tighten one down so it kind of holds into place. I like to do the opposite corners so I can then shuffle it back and forth. There we go, now it's in place and we can actually kind of slide it back and forth and double check that there's no pinched cables behind there as well. So we'll find the spot we like, I think I'm good with about there, just make sure it's not bumping into anything down below. And then we can go ahead and put in the other 10 screws. I noticed this one threaded screw hole is behind the bar here. So we'll just slide it over a little bit, make sure they're all visible. And we'll go ahead and put the other ones in. I like to do them a little looser now and then just tighten them down at the end. And then once they're all in, just go ahead and tighten them all down. Not too tight, just nice and snug. You don't wanna strip anything in case you have to remove it later. There we go. So this is where things get a little bit different depending if you're doing an Intel build or an AMD build. So if you're doing an Intel build, this is in the box, you can grab that. I have an LG A1700 socket, so I need to move these corners out to the outer edge so the holes align. If you're doing 1200, those would be 
And now if you're doing an AMD build, you should already have a back plate on your motherboard. So this is for the Intel build. And we're gonna put this onto the back of our motherboard and those will line up with the holes around our CPU. We're also gonna to need to look for four of these screws that came in the box. And the thread on these is slightly different on both sides. So the side that has the little kind of indent behind the screw there is the side that goes into here. You might wanna double check those. Um, don't try to thread them in the wrong side. So let's go ahead and mount this on our motherboard. So we'll take that back plate and there's four holes here. So we're just gonna line those up, make sure they line up perfectly. And then we'll turn the computer around and I'm holding that back plate in place with one hand and then I'm gonna take these screws, again, make sure you're doing the right side and just thread them in. There's four of them, so do one in each corner. Now it should stay in place that I've got two of them in there. I'll do the last two. There we go, they're nice and snug. Basically as tight as I can go with my fingers. Just like that. There's a better look at them there, the four of them. So in the box, grab these brackets. If you're doing an AMD build, it's these smaller ones. And if you're doing an Intel build, it's the bigger ones. Do keep in mind, the holes here are wider. Again, just like the back plate where you kind of slide them back and forth depending on the socket you're using. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these on those standoffs down there. So for an Intel 1700, they go in this direction with the opening facing the CPU and push down so they're wider like that. The same thing here. And kind of slide them into place. And then in the box, there was these nuts that have a Phillips head on them. We'll go ahead and screw those on. Now, again, make sure these are in the proper position. We'll just put these on. And once they're properly in place, tighten them down with a screwdriver. Just don't over tighten them. You don't want to strip those threads. There we go, like that. So before you apply any thermal paste, I would double check that these spring loaded nuts line up exactly with the screws on those brackets. It's kind of messy if you've already put down your thermal paste and you realize you've done it wrong. So mine's lining up perfect. So time for the thermal paste. I'll let you do your own research in what method to use to apply it. Everybody seems to have a different opinion on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it on mine. And don't forget to peel off the tab on the bottom of the blockhead. And again, I wouldn't touch that. And we'll line this up. Try to do this very carefully that it lines up perfectly on the first try, like that. And then grab your screwdriver. And I like to just do a couple turns on each side, back and forth. So it gives even pressure. until it's nice and snug. And again, don't strip those nuts, just like that. So there we go, we've got the block head installed. Let's move on to the wiring. So we've got four cables we need to plug in here. This one to the right comes from these three fans at the top. We'll do that one last. And then we've got three others here. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna plug them in on the front. I'm not gonna do any cable management. I'll let you do that on your own. So we'll start out with this one here. That's the ARGB connector. So it's got three little pins on it. Now at the top here, I've got one called J Rainbow. You might have one called ARGB. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Again, make sure you're putting it in in the correct direction because one of them does not have a socket there. So you don't wanna bend any pins. There we go, like that. And then we've got our fan connector here. So this, you can plug into AIO pump or I have a pump fan down here. Now this is only a three pin and that's a four pin. There's a little notch on the connector down there that slides onto three of those. So make sure you're putting it in in the correct direction. There we go. And then we've got our USB 2.0 connector that goes on the bottom here on mine. Now do be careful when you're plugging this in because one of the corners doesn't have a 
notch in it. So you want to make sure that that's the same corner that doesn't have the pin. There we go. And then we've got our fan connector here. So this is a four pin and we're going to plug this into CPU fan up here at the top as well. And again, make sure you plug this one in the correct direction because it does have these notches here as well. So line that up just like that. And we're all hooked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these cables, start up the computer, and we'll see what this looks like up and running. All right, so we're up and running here and the fans are spinning at the top by the radiator. I've done some testing and it's running great. The hose is down to the block head. And I've got the temperature on there in Celsius. You can download the free software on the PC Cooler website, and that allows you to put the temperature up there in either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Just make sure you're downloading it for the correct cooler. And the ARGB lighting, I've got an MSI motherboard, and I'm controlling that with the Mystic Light software. So it's working great, matches my motherboard. And really it's that simple to install the PC Cooler DS360 AIO. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.